<sighs> makeshift ruler. My ass hurts. Programmed into bent over rows. We're going to swap them. We're going to put in the, the T by row machine. Oh, we're back. We're filming. Let me just intro this. Back in the gym. It's been a month. It's been a, it's been a month since we've been off. We're very excited to get back in. Um, today, we are literally going to dive straight back in. We're going to take you guys through a pull session. But we're going to... If any of you guys have seen the leg session that we filmed a couple months back, where we gave you a little bit more in-depth information on how to train legs and ways to improve your own in training and intensity and, and form. We're going to go through a similar sort of thing today with, with the back session so that you guys can see how we're going to, or how I'm going to go about improving my back because I believe that back is one of my weakest areas. So it's something that I need to be paying attention to to improve. Um, however, Training in the garage has left me beaten up with some injuries. I did have physio the other day, um, so we have fixed the injuries, but I don't want to aggravate them any further. I have a little bit of a twinge in my right glute leading into my lower back. So rather than me be silly today, I'm going to take that in mind um, and I may be swapping some of the exercises that we would normally do, like a bent over row, for example. Uh, the good thing is, if we're not doing a bent over row, I can't get put on the form police. Uh, Instagram page. I'm gonna write a logbook. The logbook hasn't been out for a while. Trusty logbook is back. I'm gonna drink the pre in Liam Shaker. And uh, <laughs> and then we're gonna we're gonna dive in. We are just gonna dive in and we'll we'll kind of just take you through it as we go. I've lost it. I've lost it. I've got it here. Yeah, but your session's different to mine. Have you seen the phone case, Liam? Do you know what this is? It's an Iron Man phone case. This actually took me about three months to get this imported from China. China. And, uh, sick case, mate. So we saw the physio. Did we see Andy two days ago, babe? Yeah. Two days ago. We saw the physio two days ago. Well, the problem that I've had is because we've been training at home, obviously you've seen the garage gym on the episodes. Everything is, is barbell related and everything is stability related. So all the exercises that we was having to perform to shift some form of load to replicate gym training has been through a barbell. Now, the problem that I've found with that is that they're all kind of like foreign movements to me, movements that I'm not familiar with. So we've found that my body's, or the way my, my physio described it to me, I don't know this stuff, but he said that something to do with my central nervous system not reacting very well to uh, more foreign exercises and kind of locking areas up and tightening areas up that it shouldn't. So we found an issue with my glute that's led down, my hamstrings are rock hard, my lower back's rock hard. So before we start in the gym, especially at the moment with us being off a month, it's important that we warm up properly. So we'll just go through all of my uh, actual mobility exercises before we dive into the session. It'll warm up my shoulders, my back, my glutes, my hamstrings, so that when we do go over and through into the gym, I'm ready to go. And we're not gonna make any injuries worse because obviously this off season, if I get an injury, I'm gonna be out for a while and then I'm not gonna be growing, so we don't want that. <laughs> you have to dodge your own pole. The pole's meant to move around you, you're not gonna move around the pole. So normally, on this rotation of pull, we'd start with a, a bent over barbell row. However, what I did find is in the garage when I was doing that, because of the injury that I had to my glute, I wasn't feeling the most comfortable. It was stopping me from being able to lift a decent enough load to be able to put enough stress on my back. So we're gonna swap that out today for this. But this is a good bit of equipment anyway, so it's not as if uh, it matters. We're going to warm up and then we will talk you through the session.
so nice. So nice to squeeze the back properly again. Third one. Is that the sock? Yeah, that's the famous <laughs> sock wheel. <laughs> We're gonna keep it till next year when we compete and we'll put it back on. So we've warmed up, we've established working set weight for set one. Um, so typically speaking, warm-up wise, on um, especially on the first exercise, we'll do maybe two or three actual warm-up sets, and then we'll start on our loading sets, which I think we've spoken about before, but they are literally just as we're building up weight, we'll just feel the weight on each sort of new weight with a few reps until we build up to what we believe would be our working set target weight. So our first set today, we've got two working sets. First set today is six to nine. Now the issue that we've got is that with us being back in the gym and having a month off, working set weight will not be the same as what it was previously. Obviously you've not been in for a month, so you're gonna to have to expect that you're gonna to have to go off field. So that what it may involve today is slightly more loading sets than what we're used to, to make sure that the weight that we're lifting for our working sets is correct. So if you're someone yourself that's going back in the gym and you've had a month off, I'm pretty sure this is very relatable to everybody. Um, don't just go in expecting to lift the same numbers as you have been doing. Make sure that you potentially add in more loading sets to establish a correct weight, regardless of what you lifted previously, so you can get your, your new set weight right and then build up on that. So we're gonna try this, first set's around six to nine. It'll be complete failure, and we'll get Big Dog to give us a um, fourth rep when she's finished on the phone. <laughs> and we'll go from there. What about your name? Uh, spotting me. Well, I like training with Maddie is because obviously I've taught Maddie a lot of, of her training since she first started, which makes her like the perfect training partner for me because she knows when I need a spot, she knows how much to give me, which for me, so, so important. If you've got a training partner that basically doing the work for you, taking away from your progress, Maddie will help me the smallest amount in my lifts, which means I can still progress. And even if she's spotting me, Still, still making it difficult for myself. Yeah. So, you have got a training partner, talk to each other and teach them how you like to be spotted. So everything today is two sets. So we have a top set and a back off set. So the top set generally is a little bit heavier, a little bit less reps. Um, so on like a heavy compound like the row we just did was six to nine. On this we're doing 10 to 12. And then the next set, the second set, would be our higher rep set where we're burning out, we're squeezing a lot more. That allows us to get hit different rep ranges. And also, obviously, although we're only counting two of the working sets and they're the only two that we record, we will obviously do the amount of loading sets we need to. So the actual volume is a decent amount, but it just means that we're <coughs> prioritizing the two sets and a lot of people will ask me, you know, if in, the, in the programs that I did, if I do give them two sets, is why do I only do two sets? Surely that's not enough stress to build muscle. I'll tell you straight, and, and Maddie can definitely agree with this because she used to train different to this as well. If you do two sets on an exercise to complete failure, you shouldn't need to do any more. Like that should be enough over the course of the exercises to absolutely smash her. If you feel as if you need more volume, you're not applying enough intensity to your working sets. So sometimes I could do one set and that would be enough for it to be to provide a stimulus to grow. I don't need three sets of 10 to 12 like everyone believes.
Come on. So what's good about being back in the gym? The bloody steps that I get in. <laughs> Just walking around finding plates. What I was gonna do, talk to you about a little bit about exercise selection and how I believe that it should be based upon individuals. And it's something that having Cooper as a coach is good because I can feed back to him what exercises feel good and don't feel good. As individuals, we're all going to find different exercises more beneficial and we're going to feel them a lot more than others. You know, what I find feels good on my back, Liam might find feels doesn't feel good or he might like something else. And what's important is with a muscle group like a back, it is a difficult area to train. You have to get used to and practice squeezing that area and learning how to contract it properly in order to create enough stress upon it to create a new stimulus to grow. So, when we look at exercise selection, my programming is, and your programming, or everyone watching this programming, should be based around the exercises that you can feel the most. So there is no right and wrong way, really, or best exercises for anybody. It's all about how do you feel certain exercises, and if they feel good, you can put them within your program and progress within them. So that's why it's important my clients will feed back to me how their programs feel how their exercises that i give them feel i'll do the same with kuba and overall we can create a, a way of training that suits the exercises that we like so exercise selection is very important when looking to develop an area especially for like me with a weak area like my back i need to be utilizing the exercises that i feel to grow my back because it is weak so we put the ones in that feel the best because it's, it's actually really simple. I think a lot of people overcomplicate it. You literally only need to focus on this machine in driving your elbow towards your hip. So as you're sat down, the only movement that I think about during this is just driving this down. That in turn will allow me to work my lap and then obviously stretch it on the way up. Too many people are thinking about trying to contract their back and move around, keep yourself in a fixed position Drive your elbow down and your lat will do the work for you. Don't allow your upper body to twist all over the place to try and get a big, bigger squeeze. You're only trying to focus and isolate the lat. The reason we use straps is because otherwise my grip will go and I won't be able to lift anything. I don't really care about a good grip, I care about a big back.
Baseball is one of my preferred exercises for this. Now a lot of people will do them on a normal cable standing up. I prefer them using this kind of setup because the cable is positioned high, allows me to be in line to drive my elbows back nice and high, target the rear delt. It also allows me to place my feet on the pad and stay very stable so that I'm not applying any kind of swing backwards and forwards. All I literally have to then focus on doing is driving my elbow back nice and high from the set position of the cable to target them. So this is a really good sell for me and um, hit the rear downs. training glutes today. Yes, I am. <laughs> nah, Maddie's on a different split to me. Obviously, I coach her, so some, some exercises that I do, she's got target on other areas to build the glutes. Back done and rear's done. Now moving on to biceps. Now, actually, arms is something I, I need to bring up as well. Um, so I do hit it multiple times a week. I have a little bit of biceps on the end of a pull day. And then we also do a delts and arms day specific as well. So we can hit it a little bit more frequently to build the arms up because let's be honest, like who doesn't want good arms, right? <laughs> um, so just utilizing the equipment that we have whilst we're in a gym like this, this machine is very, very good for isolating the bicep. And it hurts a lot. Let me hurt. That's why it's good training with Maddie. It's also partially, I think she's a good spotter because she likes to inflict pain upon me. <laughs> Must be a relationship thing, but she likes to see me in pain. So I guess it's her way of getting their own back for me not doing the dishes or something. <laughs> Last exercise today is just a single cable curl. Um, I'm gonna do it facing the cable because I actually really, really like the squeeze that I get at the top of this. But one thing that you'll notice, and it'll be the same for every training session that you see me do, no matter what muscle group it is, no matter what exercise it is, no matter what rep ranges I'm aiming for, 
every working set that I do will be taken to complete failure. Because when you're trying to grow new muscle, you need to create a stimulus, you need to create a new stress. Now, if you're taking something to complete failure, you're maximizing every possibility that your body possibly can to build new muscle tissue. So, if you are going to failure, you're leaving nothing in reserve, you're making the most of all of your sets, you're putting your body in the position, or the best position possible, to build the most amount of muscle possible from training, yeah? A lot of people will talk about nutrition being the most important thing about training. Well, if you're not creating that stimulus and that stress in the gym in the first place, eating all this food, trying to grow, is going to be completely nil and void because you're not creating the stimulus or the stress in the first place. So in the gym is where you need to put the work in to then eat the food to grow afterwards, okay? Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. So saying that, let's get some big fat arms. <laughs> Session done, done. So that was like a little bit of a, a more informative kind of how we train back, tips on how to grow a good back, tips on intensity and, and how you should kind of be structuring your own training. So hopefully you guys that are watching can watch this, maybe take a little bit of value away from videos like this. Um, I do quite enjoy doing the informative ones. So if you do want to do, see more, let us know because it does make a difference to us us knowing obviously what types of videos that you like we can produce more of them there's no reason why we can't so back day complete i am actually pretty beaten up it's the first time i've trained back like that in, in four weeks so i guess it's home food work oh and then a needed rest day tomorrow so yeah um well, we shall see you next week and hopefully fingers crossed all being well we might have a very exciting video for you next week